it was time for the ground troops to liberate Kuwait. The original Allied plan was only nine days off schedule. It's very difficult in a very fast-paced ground campaign such as this war featured. 1991, we got a glimpse of what things were like in the late 1950s as the Army at Redstone stood at the forefront of the news as Desert Storm Desert Shield operations unfolded. At that time, it was the largest deployment and subsequent combat use of Army missiles in Redstone Arsenal's history. Virtually every one of the Arsenal's missile systems was deployed. Hellfire missiles launched from an Apache helicopter fired the first shots of the war, taking out early warning radars and paving the way for the Air Force's campaign. Hellfire and tow missiles went on to destroy hundreds of Iraqi tanks, personnel carriers, and other vehicles during the course of the war. MLRS rockets rained down on the Iraqi artillery units and other targets so effectively that the Iraqis referred to them as steel rain. And the Scud Buster, better known as the Patriot missile system, became a household word. Uh, boundary before you start the ground war. Based on what they found, I think there's no doubt in their mind or anyone else's that we exceeded 50% very significantly. One of them relayed to me, he said... Artillery was destroyed by air 100% before the ground campaign started, and in fact, I called for artillery support from the division next to mine, and their artillery was destroyed 100% by air in transit to support...